as we get started tonight, there's a lot of detail that we need to go over. Uh, but first, I want to start off with some general information about the cordum technique and what it actually is capable of achieving. Uh, the cordum technique is a visual health assessment process uh, that performs very effectively in the healthcare delivery system. The cordum technique is a visually based process. It is um, the way the technique works is by simply observing the physical presence of another human being. This all began when I was very young. Uh, when I was uh, a young boy, I realized that when I looked at people that I perceived qualities about them that went beyond their hair color, their eye color, their size, their weight. Now at the time I didn't know exactly what it was that I was seeing. That came much later. But I spent most of my life translating what these perceptual qualities meant as I look at a person. What I also noticed that when I was looking at people, I was s s perceiving more than a optical image. Now, I want to make it very clear that when I look at a person, I do not see colors, I do not see auras, I do not look into the body like an x-ray or an MRI. There is nothing unique uh, or additional in my field of view compared to anyone else's here. I have simply learned to know what to look for. After I correlated the matrix of indicators, then I began searching for healthcare providers that would pursue a clinical study with me. And it took me a very long time to find uh, physicians that would even entertain the idea that you can look at a human being and determine pretty precisely what's going on with their health simply by looking at them. Uh, but eventually I did, and my book will talk about you know, how I found the physicians in Bethesda, Maryland. The clinical testing took place at Wingate Medical Park in Bethesda, Maryland. Uh, so let's go and show you some of the examples of what happened in those clinical trials. If we can bring up the trials, please. In the left column, we see the cordum technique assessment findings, and in the right column, we see conventional medicines Findings. Conventional medical findings were determined by uh, blood tests, uh, x-rays, uh, you know, listening to your heart, taking your blood pressure, taking your temperature, just your standard uh, health evaluation procedures whenever you go to the doctor. Uh, again, over here on the left is the cordum technique findings, and these were determined by simply uh, I would simply look at a person in the examination room. I didn't know anything about them. I didn't know anything about their health history, nor were they allowed to communicate to me any, any of the ailments or symptoms or pains or discomforts they might have been experiencing. So in the first one we see uh, H-E-E-N-T is head, ear, eye, nose, throat. Um, and I identified an ear indicator for this particular patient. And the conventional medical findings showed uh, acute ear pain, sinitis, and bronchitis. Uh, the next one on the list is I detected a muscular skeletal indicator and conventional medicine determined that there was um, some post trauma from a motor vehicle accident from 1964, jo joint pain and back pain and shoulder tendonitis. Uh, I identified a genital urinary indicator in the patient and this patient had a, had a hysterectomy in the past and a history of ovarian cysts. Uh, I identified a blood indicator, which was specifically identified as a diabetes indicator, and conventional medic medicine um, determined that they had a history of elevated blood glucose and anemia. And then the last one, I detected a breast indicator, and the patient had microcalcifications in the left breast at the time of examination. Eventually, we found that this information although accurate, was not as specific as perhaps we would have liked. We wanted it to be more specific than simply generally identifying a location in the body or, or a, uh, 
a level of intensity within the body. And that's when we took a break in the study and we realized that it would be very useful if we could categorize these indicators. Uh, after much consideration, we realized that categorizing the indicators much the way we categorize a, a burn in first, second, or third degree uh, was the most effective way of taking qualitative data and making it quantitative.